Hi, I'm Dwayne Baker, president of the Burt Group, and I'm here today with Lisa Law, research associate with the Burt Group. So the Burt Group conducts needs assessments for schools for a variety of different reasons. Uh, it could be that they have a new administrator that comes on board, or uh, they just haven't done one for a long time, or maybe they're a part of a school improvement project. And every needs assessment is made up of two main parts, a school practices study and a classroom practices study. So let's go ahead and get started and chat about, let's start with the school improvement practices. Now you've been on a lot of these, mm -hmm. driving all over the country and, and involved with these. So, um, what should a what should a staff expect the morning of a needs assessment? If we're going to come in and be working with the school to help them out with their school improvement processes, what should they expect to get the day started? So normally we'll show up to the school between a half an hour to an mm -hmm. hour before the school day starts, and we will check in with the front office, sign in, get our name badges and things like that taken care of, okay. and we'll probably be asking for several things to get our schedule for the day. So we'll need a master schedule, okay. a list of the teachers, a map of the building, um, things like that. Okay. Um, Have you ever met with the staff ahead of time, like in a in a staff meeting, just to introduce the team? I know I've done that a couple of times. I don't know if you guys have been. Have Sometimes, done it. I mean, we'll try to accommodate what the mm -hmm. school is most comfortable with. So if they'd yeah. like us to meet in advance and kind of get everybody mm -hmm. introduced, we can yeah, definitely. That'd do be that. great. Mm -hmm. I think that's a nice thing. So if anybody wants to meet with us ahead of time as a whole group, have a quick 15-minute staff meeting before the day starts. We would love to be involved with definitely. that. Definitely. Okay, so the 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 bell rings that we get started. Let's talk about the the school practices part of this. Uh, which will be looking at all the different um, uh, elements related to the school. Mm -hmm. um, what are some things that the teachers might be involved in during the day related to that? So we will be conducting focus groups and interviews throughout the day. Okay. Um, different groups, so, uh, and it, it might depend on how the school, the, the day is set up. Um, so we'll have groups of different teachers, maybe by grade level, maybe by subject area. Um, special ed teachers, specialists in the building, things like that, um, administrative staff. Um, so all the groups of the school are represented. Usually we'd call that a sample of convenience because we want to work around their schedule mm -hmm. and um, uh, usually before school, during some sort of a meeting time that the teachers have during the day or even after school, is yeah. that right? During their planning period or after mm -hmm. school, whenever okay. it seems the best for their fit. And, uh, and we would work along with the, the school administrator or whoever sets up the visit uh, to just work around their schedule, mm -hmm. whatever would work best for them. And usually we'll, we'll know this in advance so the teachers don't have to scramble Absolutely. that day to, you know, to get to see us. Okay, so they're going to know in advance mm -hmm. when we're meeting, how many people are in the group, and, and you know, maybe even an idea of the types of questions we're going to be asking along the way. Hopefully, so yeah. that's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, so that's the school uh, side of the, of the study. We're going to be doing focus groups, interviews, meeting with people before school, during their, uh, during their meeting times during the day mm -hmm. and after school, whatever is the most convenient to them. And then talk to me a little bit about the classroom observation portion of this. How, how should people be prepared for that? So the teachers will know that we're coming that day. Um, and so the team will go out into the school and observe classrooms for about 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. Um, and so teachers should just be prepared, just do their normal day of teaching and um, they don't, need, they don't need to do anything special for Nothing the Burke special. Observer? No, okay. we're just there to see what the average day looks like in a classroom okay. and what students are learning. And how many, how many uh, Burke uh, researchers will be in a classroom at any given time? Um, between one and two, usually. <clears throat> okay. And um, one of the things I've always really liked is that we try to calibrate mm -hmm. often. And so uh, sometimes there would be two people in the classroom, maybe at the beginning of the day, but, um, but normally just one person. And they might come in at the beginning of the period, middle of the period, end of the period. Like when will they come in? Mm -hmm. So depending on the structure of the period at that particular school, if it's a, um, you know, an hour-long period, mm -hmm. one teacher will be observed at the first half, and one teacher will be observed at the second half. So okay. it, it really depends on how the schedule works out. Okay. Um, if we come into a classroom mm -hmm. and it looks like they're testing, we would never stay and observe tests or things okay. like that. Okay. So. Okay. So that's a good. That's a good point. We're, we're in there. We're in there, we want a normal day. Teachers don't have to do anything special to set up for us. Um, if they happen to be giving a test during that time period, we're able to pick that up and then w we don't observe that teacher that day then? Um, if the teacher can tell us that they won't be doing that test all day, if they have a period where they're doing something else, then okay. we can try to come back then. Okay, so if we get a chance to chat with the teacher a little bit and ask for what, when would be a good time <laughs> to come back, we can set that up for them <laughs> usually. We try to be as least disruptive to the classroom as we yeah. can. So yeah. if we have a chance to chat with a teacher and they're able to tell us an easier time for them, for us to come back and see them, we try to accommodate that. No, I think that's great. It's probable that some of these schools might have substitutes that day or uh, student teachers or that kind of thing. Um, 
we, we don't want that to go necessarily into their data. So how, how do we work around that? So that's one of the things we'll ask at the beginning of the day is for that information. If there are subs or student teachers, if it's just during a certain period, we'll try to work around that and come back at a better time. But typically we wouldn't see uh, a sub or a student teacher unless it's a sub that's in the building for a really long time. So it's kind of part of their school okay. community. I think it'd be important to talk about uh, you know, what we're looking for while we're in the classroom. Now we use a STAR classroom observation protocol. Uh, tell everybody just like the, the, the main elements related to the STAR protocol and, and what a typical observation, like 30, 30 minutes looks like. Sure, well, like you said, we're using the protocol, which is looking at skills, okay. knowledge, thinking, application, and relationships. Okay. And each five of those components have several indicators that we're looking for. Um, some having to do with the teacher and some having to do with what the students are are learning and um, and as far as the data goes, the, then the researcher will look through skills, and then they're going to look through knowledge, thinking, application, relationships, and in the end, the overall lesson is uh, there's there's some sort of a rating for the overall lesson to the extent to which it's aligned with powerful teaching and learning. Right. And then that goes into a database, and then what about the data uh, that comes back from this um, r related to the teachers? So we give each teacher a code actually so they're not even referred to by their name on the protocol okay. um, and then we collect all that and we aggregate it and we never present schools any data with a specific teacher's data okay. so um, everything is anonymous in the sense that it's it's a picture of the whole school it's just a snapshot we know we've only been in there for a half a period maybe so mm -hmm. we don't expect that we've seen what you know what you do every single day right. as a teacher we know that you might have we might have seen you at a weird time mm -hmm. um, but it's yeah. just kind of a just a quick look and a general feel of what's going on and what the students are experiencing at that school. You bet. Now, Lisa, what, what, what about if a teacher wants to know how their classroom scored, so to speak? If they, if they, when they get the report back, if they wanted to know uh, how they were rated in their classroom, what would we do? We, we would just explain that we keep these things anonymous. It's part of what protects the teacher and should help them feel more comfortable about us being there. And so um, they can see their data within the context of what the rest of the school looks like. Okay, so even if they wanted to see it, we would say, it, that's just really not the purpose of it. I'm so sorry, you know, uh, this is actually just a school-wide look at mm -hmm. this point, okay? And I agree with you that that should help people feel comfortable. Like, we're not gonna share it, it's, it's, it's school-wide. And, uh, but you'll be able to see the aggregate school-wide data. Right. Now we've conducted over 30,000 classroom <laughs> observations in this, uh, you know, conducting it this way, and it correlates with student achievement. Uh, we, we know that it's a really powerful tool, it's really powerful data, but we always do keep in mind that it is a snapshot in time. We want people to be able to process through the data and continue to reflect through it, but it ends up being a really good piece of data for people to mm -hmm. consider um, in, their, in their school improvement. Okay, so we, we've talked about the uh, interviews and focus groups, and then there's also classroom observations. Uh, what are some other kinds of things we might collect as part of a needs assessment? So we might be looking for surveys from students, okay. staff, and parents in some cases. Um, for high schools, we'll be t collecting transcripts okay. for their graduates, um, course catalogs. Okay. So those are some things we're actually collecting. Now, what are we going to be doing with the transcripts? Why are we collecting transcripts? So we'll take the transcripts and we code them and analyze them to see what proportion of the students are graduating at all and graduating college eligible. Okay, okay, great. And then the course catalogs, what are we interested in there? We're looking at what types of courses schools are offering students. Are these courses rigorous? Are they good courses to get them into these colleges? Okay. There is a real focus on this whole idea of college and career readiness. Mm -hmm. And so I know that a lot of the data you guys are collecting out there has to do with um, to what extent the schools are uh, preparing them, like taking the types of courses they're supposed to, mm -hmm. to be college ready, and then, and then uh, like you said with the transcripts, are they graduating college ready? And then I know another team takes that then and tracks them into and through college, like right. looking at their college graduates, to what extent are they going to college, mm -hmm. so that's great. Now tell everybody a little bit more about the surveys, like who, who uh, might be filling out a survey? So for surveys, we might be giving them to students, staff, and um, in some cases, families okay. to be collecting data just about the experience of those people in the school. I and I know, I know that uh, when the team's writing the reports and, and even uh, in some cases, if we can get the surveys done early enough, we can actually even use those as formulating some of our interview questions and mm -hmm. focus group questions. But it really helps us triangulate the data along the way so it's not just uh, interviews or observations, we actually get their their uh, opinions also through the surveys, which is just great. Right.
So um, <clears throat> we've been in the school. We've we've conducted the needs assessment now. There's been a team of people. It could be all the way from two to maybe eight or ten, ten people yep. in the school uh, for a day or two. Mm -hmm. And so what can they expect after we've conducted the study? We've now left. Uh, they don't see us for a couple days. What's happening behind the scenes? So we have collected a ton of data at that school. So different people will be taking parts of that and analyzing it, writing up reports, tailoring things and recommendations to the school. Um, really just providing a look for them to see kind of what's going on with their school and with their improvement efforts and things like that. And so um, hopefully they'll be able to take these big reports that we've put together and really take something meaningful from that. Absolutely. And I like how the reports are broken out, and, and it depends on what um, you know the project is and what we're looking for. Whether it's the uh, the the list of ten or the list of nine or the you know whatever list. And a, a lot of these reports that we're going to be doing this fall, we'll be organizing those around the seven turnaround principles, and then also uh, they'll have their own individual star report mm -hmm. uh, to be able to see uh, uh, which characteristics they might want to be focusing on. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I just love about these reports is. Uh, there are always some things that schools are doing well mm -hmm. and there are always some things that schools can continue to work on and I just appreciate all the work of yourself and the team as you guys continue to try to um, focus down to just a few things really good leverage points to really help the, help the schools let's talk a little bit about how long it will take uh, for people to get their reports back typically well, it might depend on the project and who needs to review it beforehand. Um, some of them will be turned around within a couple of days. Some of them might be a week okay. or two. So that's a pretty fast turnaround. Mm -hmm. So we're in there for a day or two, looking at all the school practices, the classroom practices. We bring in, in at the secondary schools, we're even looking at uh, transcripts and college attendance and all that kind of thing. And within a couple of days or a couple of weeks, we're turning these reports around. Mm -hmm. And these are, uh, these are like 50 to 70 page reports. We're getting these turned around to folks and delivered out to them, uh, back out to their schools. Mm -hmm. So after we've done all that, we've got a quick turnaround and then we, we uh, bring the report back to the schools and process them through that. And one of the things I'm really proud of with the team is the amount of work and insight uh, that goes into those reports that really helps the staff focus their work moving mm -hmm. forward. Because obviously there's, there's, there's always several things we could always be working on in schools. Uh, but what I like about it is there's elements related to the school practices and elements related to classroom practices that really help them focus their work. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we get hired to come in and do a, a, a needs assessment. You know, it can be for a variety of reasons. Uh, a new administrator in the building wants to know kind of the climate of the building and how mm -hmm. people feel about it. Um, or maybe they've been identified as a school that needs to improve along the way. And so uh, it might not necessarily be the school's first choice or it wasn't their decision to have a needs assessment. And I know that the team really um, is sensitive about that and really tries to make sure that we're, you know, we meet the needs of the people and we're sensitive to that. Um, but some people might even, they might feel nervous about focus groups or interviews. Um, what could we tell folks about that process that might alleviate some of those concerns? So we know it's completely natural for a school in any situation. It's, it's nerve wracking to have people coming in and looking at you and maybe you feel like you're being judged about something. Mm -hmm. And we want to make it really clear that we're in there as a third party, a neutral observer. We're just trying to get kind of a picture of what things are going on. Um, and just like the classroom observations, what we hear in those focus groups is confidential. When we write the things okay. in the reports, we'll just say a yeah. staff member shared right. something. Um, and so a lot of times, even though it's, teachers might be really nervous about the process at the beginning of the day, by the end, they have really opened up and shared so much with us. And then when they get those reports back, they'll read them and say, wow, you actually listened to what we were saying. Yeah. You really helped us understand what's going on at our school. I'm so glad you said that because I have delivered you know, hundreds of these reports back to schools. And that's what I hear often is, boy, I can't believe our voice was really heard here. They see things that uh, maybe that they heard in, in a focus group or things that they had said in a confidential interview and, and they really feel like they've been, they've been listened to along the way. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and I think that just what I appreciate about the Burke group and the whole process is, and, and, I, and I think that you're right, uh, even if people are nervous about the, at the beginning of the day, uh, and boy, in most cases, they are not nervous by the end of the day. They really appreciate the team. They love working with you guys. And um, I think that they know that our goal is as a third party uh, coming in 
and helping them focus their work that that we really care about them we care about the work and that we're there to help mm -hmm. and that uh, and as we even as we process the report it's it's not as if it's a completely absolute just done deal we would actually use that presentation as a vetting process where we can continue to gather more information along the way mm -hmm. so appreciate you sharing that that's yeah. great and one more thing we have a, a team of really sincere people who care about education care Absolutely. about students so we're passionate about this stuff yep I, I totally 100 percent agree it's just amazing Lisa, it's been fun talking to you about the needs assessment. I'm so proud of the work that the, that the whole team does and uh, really appreciate your leadership out there. And I think it's kind of fun that some of the folks that might be watching the video would be good to see you out there. And so um, anyway, we hope that this was helpful for you. We want the process uh, to be one that's inviting. Uh, we really do uh, believe that the, the information you're going to be receiving is going to be valuable to your school. We appreciate the fact that you let us work with you and uh, we look forward to, to uh, working with you very soon. If you need any more information, please look us up on burkgroup.com and if you have any specific questions, just uh, select contact us and we will be back in touch with you right away. So we really wish you well in all of your work.